Welcome to our In Focus discussion tonight about Fan X 2021. Last year, organizers made the difficult decision to postpone the in-person event due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But this year, the three-day convention returns and we're here to give you a preview of what's to come and what you can expect. Kicking off our conversation tonight live via Zoom is voice actor and singer Rob Paulson. He is the voice of Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, Raphael and Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron, just to name a few. And Rob, thank you so much for joining us tonight and welcome to the show. Hello, Rosie. Nice to see you. You never Thank know what you. we're going to get with you, Rob. Rob, let's start the conversation with talking about your Great. career. How did you Thank start you. as a voice actor and singer, and what's your favorite part about it all? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the fact that I don't have to do real a real job to pay for things. Uh, I am by, absolutely the, about the luckiest person in the world. I go to work every day. Uh, I'm actually here right now. And I get paid to do essentially what got me in trouble in seventh grade. I came out to LA, LA many years ago, ostensibly to do music and TV. And that's what I was doing, uh, movies. Uh, but then I lived that axiom that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. I uh, had no idea that all the years that I was making silly noises and trying to create characters that one day it would all you know, come together at the right time. And I started doing animation in the mid 80s, I uh, started doing G.I. Joe and Transformers. And I told my agent, man, this is the gig. Nobody cares what I look like. And so now as an old person, people still don't care what I look like. All I got to do is start talking like Pinky and then Rosie starts to laugh. It's a lovely way to move through life. Oh, I love that. You bring so much joy to people's lives. Now you oh, are going you. to be one of the guests at Fanex this year. What do you love the most about attending conventions like Fanex? Well, you kind of already said it, meeting the fans. Um, look, I don't draw them and I don't write them, Rosie. I'm really good at my job, but so are you. I ought to be. Uh, but when it comes together and it works. Um, like with Carl Weezer, everybody that watched Jimmy Neutron kind of digs Carl. And there's something about the voice that makes people smile. And I'm so grateful to see it. It is a profoundly magical thing and fan expo is a world class event dan farr and his people out there in salt lake are killing it it is a wonderful place to get sort of back in the saddle now over the years you've voiced more than 250 different animated characters what are some yeah. of your most favorite or memorable and would you be able to demonstrate any for us Sure. Well, let's see. Yakko Warner from Animaniacs and, and Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, both of which are back on Hulu now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spielberg. Um, Raphael uh, from the original Ninja Turtles. And um, then I was Donatello on a 2012 iteration over on Nickelodeon. So I've done two uh, Ninja Turtles. I figure if I live to be 100, I can knock them all out. And then, as I mentioned, Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. Um, and people say, what's your favorite character? And I say the next one, because it means I'm working. Uh, but those are a half a dozen or so that people seem to know. And um, it's just uh, uh, the most creative, wonderful way, the upshot of which is all I have to do is look at my new friend Rosie and say, hello, nurse, and you smile. It's just a pretty cool thing. You are really bringing me back to my childhood and putting a big Isn't smile on not just my face, People at home can only see my face, but everyone here on set is smiling oh, as well. <laughs> thank you. That makes it, it's it. And it happens all the time, Rosie. Um, I can tell you that that when I meet folks, uh, once they find out who find out who I am, it is nothing but pure joy. And I promise you the person who gets the big kick out of it is yours truly. It's just it's so, so wonderful. Now, aside from your professional career as a voice actor and singer, you also spend quite a bit of time with a cause that you care dearly about, the Head and Neck Cancer mm -hmm. Alliance. Tell us a little right. bit more about that. I care a lot about it because five years ago at this time, I was undergoing uh, chemo and radiation for stage three metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of my throat. Surprise! Um, we make plans and God laughs, uh, but I'm fine. Uh, the fact that I'm able to do my job is a remarkable um, testament to the world-class medicine, gold standard medicine that I've been fortunate enough to uh, to take advantage of. 
So now my work has, I think, much more import precisely because I had throat cancer. So the Head and Neck Cancer Alliance has uh, enlisted me, and I'm so, so privileged to be their spokestoon. Um, and if folks go to headandneck.org, they will see my story um, and also be able to help other folks out. Look, the fact is, Rosie, that we never know when folks kind enough for you, uh, as you folks here at, uh, at NBC, our, our, our ABC. ABC. We're at ABC. Sorry, ABC. It's okay. Sorry, it forgive me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a stupid lab mouse. What do I know? It's but okay. It all the kind of meshes together when you do so much media, you know? Well, uh, it is. I'm, fortunate, I'm, I'm lucky to be that busy. But the fact is that because you're so kind to give me this shot, we never know when somebody's going to see this interview and they're dealing with someone in their life whom they love who's going through throat cancer. It is uh, sadly going to affect over 600,000 people this year worldwide. And the fact that I'm able to do my job again after going through a pretty intense treatment regimen, which has saved my life. But Rosie, you are giving me such an incredible opportunity. Somebody somewhere might see this and say, I don't know who the guy is, but it's the guy who does Yakko and Animaniacs. And hey, Uncle John, we watched that show. You're fixing to go through this treatment. This guy went through it and he's back doing it again. Steven Spielberg hired him again. That's why this is important and I'm so grateful that you asked me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure hearing from you folks. You've been hearing from voice actor and singer Rob Paulson. Rob, thank you so much for your time tonight. We will see you at FanX. Absolutely, love. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us for our second In Focus discussion tonight on FanX 2021. Up next in our conversation is Mike Merceberg, CEO of Wild Bill's Craft Beverage Company. And Mike, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Pleasure being here, Rosie. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, tell us about your company and the products that you offer to your customers. Sure. Uh, Wild Bill's is a veteran owned and operated non-alcoholic craft beverage company. Uh, we've been around since 2002. Um, so for the approximately the last 20 years, uh, we've been traveling throughout the country, um, attending you know the largest events throughout the country, uh, spanning Comic Con, car shows, uh, food festivals, uh, with our Western themed uh, pop up retail activation. Um, you know, serving you know uh, delicious beverages in our stainless steel collectible mugs. Uh, customers purchase our commemorative uh, mugs and they enjoy free refills at the events that we attend. Now let's get into that part of your answer about veterans. One of the unique elements is your business, like you said, is owned and operated by veterans and there's also franchise opportunity for veterans. Tell us about how you help them transition from employee to owner. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm an army veteran, uh, served six years. Um, you know, I had a I had a lot of help uh, transitioning from the military to, to the civilian sector. Um, mentors, uh, friends that had gone before me in the transition, and it really wasn't easy, uh, even having that help. Um, I think every veteran has the obligation to reach back and, and help veterans make the transition going forward. Um, you know, paying it forward. I think the company's in a very unique position, and it it it, it you know I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, it's our culture. Uh, we have veterans in, in the company um, and non-veterans um, who are here to support veterans in the transition, mentoring, role modeling, um, helping folks that are interested in, you know, whether becoming a full-time employee or becoming an actual franchisee. They're just people across the spectrum, veteran and non-veteran alike. Um, I've, you know, it's a, it's a rare atmosphere where folks are just leaning in, helping folks uh, and bringing them along the way to learn about business. Um, I think a second component is um, just the, the nature of the business itself lends itself to the, the character of, 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 of veterans, whether that's innate or uh, skill sets that they developed while in the military. Um, leadership, for sure. Uh, you know, leading a show is, is no easy feat. Uh, there are logistical elements to a show. Um, you know, there, there, uh, there are many elements, logistics, customer service. Um, and then there's things on the fly that you just can't plan for. And I think just being a veteran, you're, you're trained for those situations. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's a good fit. I think the last element is this piece around um, this special program we have for veteran franchising, um, which is basically, look, you know, we're, 
in a position to offer, uh, you know, for qualified folks, basically discounted fees becoming a franchisee, uh, and in some cases, actually financing to support folks as they acquire the equipment they need to run shows. Let's talk about how your company travels all over the country. When I was looking at your event calendar, I saw Boston, Philly, Miami, Oregon, and of course, Utah, just to name a few. What is it about being a traveling business that works out better for your company than just sticking to the brick and mortar? Yeah, look, I think it's, uh, you know, we've been doing it for 20 years. Um, there's, there's something about having the ability at an event where you're with your friends and family, uh, being able to pour um, your own beverage, uh, you know, experiment with new flavors, um, mix flavors, um, I, you know, just the, the look on people's faces and the feedback that we get is that, you know, people travel to events because we're there. I, I think we really, you know, enhance the experience, um, you know, and the element of brick and mortar that you raise, like, I don't necessarily think of it as an either or for us. Um, you know, we, I think it's both. And, you know, we are actively trying to um, move into certain markets in brick and mortar where it makes sense for us. Um, you know, in the Utah area, for example, we have thousands of fans. So, you know, it's definitely on our minds. Now, you've been a sponsor for FanX since 2018. Why do you think your beverages are so popular with people in Utah? Well, I will say this to everybody in Utah, um, and I know others in the event industry, and, and Dan can relate to this too. Um, look, you know, over the past 18 months, it hasn't been easy. And what I will say about the folks in Utah and the greater Salt Lake area in particular, um, you guys, <laughs> you know, posts, uh, messages, emails, uh, letters of support to us, uh, you know, over the past 18 months have really motivated us to get back on, you know, on our event circuit. Um, just the outpouring of support from folks in the area has just been, you know, very much appreciated. Um, you know, we, we see pictures of folks that have collections of mugs, talking about their experience, talking about, you know, can't wait to, to see you guys uh, in town. Uh, the, the list sort of goes on, but just the folks in Utah have just been so supportive, supportive of us during this period of time that we just can't wait to be, see them in person. Mike, we have to wrap, but real quick, tell us when and where people can catch you at FanX this year. Yeah, so we'll be there all three days. Uh, we'll have two stands this year, uh, one at the main, uh, main stage um, and then one in Artist Alley. Um, so, you know, we're there the whole, the whole time. And if folks can't meet us, at the event, you know, you could also go to drinkwildbills.com and you could also enjoy our beverages in the comfort of your home. All right, you've been hearing from Mike Merzberg, CEO of Wild Bills Craft Beverage Company. And Mike, thank you for being a part of our discussion. We'll see you at FanEx. My pleasure, Rosie, thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome to our third and final In Focus discussion tonight on FanEx 2021. Rounding out our conversation tonight is Dan Farr, founder and producer of FanX. Dan, thanks for your time tonight and welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me uh, be a part of this. It's so fun to, to well, it was really fun for me to see Rob and, and also see Wild Bills. I mean, they, they are absolutely crucial parts of our event. You know, Rob, Rob's been a guest before and he's coming back again with the Animaniacs. It's a great uh, opportunity to have him out here. I can tell you all are just such great friends. Now, it's been more than a year and a half since the COVID-19 pandemic hit. How did that impact FanX, and does it make this year's event a little bit more special or exciting that we're now able to see each other all again? You know what? It is. It's absolutely crucial that we're getting back together again because people have, um, you know, they've been isolated for so long, and there, there's people are chopping at the bit to be able to get out and see each other again. And, uh, you know, we did have a lot of people Everybody understood why we didn't have last year's event. You know, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, but a lot of people very sad about it because it is a really big, important part of their lives. And it is obviously for us that produce the events. We missed it. You know, we, we really wanted to get back and see the attendees and also get the celebrities together again and the vendors that come around. It's like we've become one big family uh, after doing these events. Now, FanX already dropped some of the names of the stars that will be attending this year's convention. What are some that you think fans are most excited about, and are there any that you are personally excited about? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, we try to get a good sampling of, of guests from a lot of different areas. So I, I'd say, you know, um, judging from your camera person's uh, T-shirt, Supernatural, uh, Misha Collins, you know, obviously that's a, uh, a big hit here on the CW. And, um, uh, we've got, uh, we'd like to get guests that come from, you know, current guests, 
but also we go back to nostalgia. And uh, MASH is a really, you know, that's something that uh, is a great uh, TV series for the, over the years and something I watched as a kid. And so we've got Jamie Farr and Loretta S uh, Swit and uh, Maxwell, uh, oh, I'm forgetting his first name, but uh, um, anyway, we got those three uh, from the show and it's going to be great to have them. We've had, you know, they've been kind of a, a big surprise for a lot of our, um, you know, attendees when they saw that we were bringing somebody from MASH, they got really excited. It's Jeff Maxwell, by the way, I just, it took me a second as it pops up on the screen, it helps out too. But uh, anyway, we also, you know, the Animaniacs, we've talked about them, they're, they're great. Um, Zachary Quinto, um, who's Spock in the uh, Star Trek uh, movie series. Um, and you know, really that list, you saw that list. We're still adding a few more names as well. Um, you asked uh, what was my, my favorite. I have to say, I'm excited about Jamie Farr because of his last name. You know, as I was growing up and I watched MASH, he was like the only famous person I knew that had the last name of Farr. And so the opportunity to actually meet him, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, good. Well, for a number of fans that attend every year, FanX isn't just a yearly event. It's also about a sense of community, acceptance, and identity. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, I have to say, when, when I started the first event, and we, we all got together as a team, we produced the first event, we didn't realize that it was going to become such a, a community event where people would come and they would make friends and they would really just develop a family and that's what it's become it's become a family of people that really love to celebrate pop culture and to just have a great time together I, I hear story after story how different people maybe didn't feel like they fit in completely well at fan x they fit in and and <clears throat> you know it's just it is such an open environment and people can really showcase their talents you you know you look at the the fun costumes that people will create the they're just, you're always surprised. You walk around, you know, people talk about, they love to go to the event just, just for people watching alone. Um, after our, our first couple of shows, we thought, you know what, why don't we set up some bleachers so that people can sit down and watch cosplayers walk by so it becomes like a, a parade. But uh, it really is, it's become a big family and uh, it's become an important part of the community. Uh, one of my favorite parts about FanX is you can be anyone or anything that you want to be. Absolutely. What are some of the new attractions or features that you will be offering at FanX this year? Well, we're going to have a, a quest at the event so people can be a little more interactive and, and have a good time there. We've added some new features. We've got some new um, attractions for KidCon. We also will have some attractions uh, throughout the event that people will be able to have a little more hands-on experience like a... Uh, uh, Mario Kart uh, race and, and you know just some other things like that but of course the uh, the creator panels those are going to be fun so we actually are creating uh, some more interactive panels where we're teaching people so it's more of rather than just hearing a discussion on a certain pop culture topic actually pe people will be do doing uh, classes on maybe writing or, or on uh, other creative creating costumes or, or whatever it may be we're just having people uh, take some time and share with other people how they're creating. And finally, tell us about the event details. What are the dates, location, and ticket information for FanX 2021? Okay, it's coming up in two weeks from tomorrow, so September 16th through the 18th, and so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And if you go to FanX.com, that's the best place to see the information uh, about it. You can find the ticket prices, because there's, there's different ticket options that you can pick from. And uh, the event's going to be held at the Salt Palace Convention Center. It is, uh, you know, the, the best venue in the state to be able to hold an event this size because we, we fill it up. And, you know, this year, obviously, we, we have to be a little extra careful because of COVID. So we are taking a lot of precautions and we're sharing more information on what we'll be doing in that regard uh, on our website. You've been hearing from Dan Farr, founder and producer of FanX. And Dan, thank you for joining us tonight. We wish you the best at this year's event. Thank you.